Good morning everybody, Victor here. Check it out. I am on Lake Ida. Captain Johnny Stabile of South Florida Fish and Charters and we are on an invasive species mission today. So Florida is known for a lot of things. But one thing that is really unique about our fishery is the amount of invasive and crazy freaky species we have here, especially in freshwater. So we're at a lake called Lake Ida right now and we're after a fish called a clown knife fish. This fish is actually native from Southeast Asia in Thailand but was introduced here illegally through the aquarium trade. So any one of these people on this lake right here had an aquarium. They bought a little clown knife fish when it was this big. It outgrew the tank, they released it in here, and when enough people released them in here, they started to multiply, and now there's basically this whole ecosystem of clown knife fish. Most people consider them a game fish. Uh, a lot of people catch and release them, but we're gonna eat them today. So today's video is all about the clown knife fish and they are one of the freakiest fish, especially once you guys see me fillet this thing because it is like no other meat you've ever seen. I'm literally gonna have to scrape it off with a spoon because it's some of the mushiest stuff. Snake. No. He, did you, did you, that was like the weirdest. He's still on me. Oh my gosh, he was on me. I told you. Ah, oh, gosh. Wait, wait. Okay. Way to but, blow your shot. I let him eat it, man. I let him eat it. Before we went clown knife fishing, Johnny said, let's go try to catch some snakeheads, which is another invasive species. So we came to this little skinny canal and we're just tossing frogs right along the bank here, which is one of a, I would say snakehead's favorite food probably, because these things are always looking up and looking for things to fly into the water. But we're basically just casting our frogs up and down the bank. And snakeheads like to kind of ambush their prey and all this just forage. Anytime you see like grass mats floating or you'll see chairs or any type of garbage or debris, they're usually hidden up upon that and all along the bank. If Captain Johnny Stabile didn't get me tangled, we, I <laughs> we'd you were, be back in business. I thought you were in the clear. That was a snakehead. It, I, was, a, yeah. it was a really soft hit. What the heck is that thing, Johnny? Oh, it's a bunny, yeah. It's a bunny. Somebody's pet. No, that is a wild bunny, dude. Here. Look at him, it looks like that's his little burrow, doesn't it? Dude, there's one under you. That's a gar. Oh, no, 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 no. That's snakehead. One. Nice. No, is it? Yeah, yeah. that's a snakehead. Yeah. You can tell by the way that they spin. Yep, flip them in the boat. The sickest fish, man. Flip them right in the boat. Oh, I love these things. Get him in the boat, get him in the boat. Hold oh, on, Johnny. Spit. No, that's he's, a good fish. He's good, he's good. I stuck him good. Woo! Wow, dude, that's a fat Yeah, baby! Fish. You missed our high five, Dennis. Should we do it again? <laughs> Love these fish, guys. All right. You, you kind of spooked him at first, too. Like, for snakeheads, you cast along the bank and you run the frog along the bank. And he casted just a bit short of him and it spooked the fish. And then the fish did like a 360 and just hammered that on. thing. Good job. That's a nice fish, too. Check it out. So this is a bullseye snakehead another invasive species in Florida, also from the same part of the world that the clown knife fish is from, Southeast Asia. And every single time I catch them, I gotta show the subscribers. Listen to this, ready? They got a, a hard head, man. Hard, just, hard head. He just bit the frog, too. As uh, cliche as it sounds, you can see why they call him a snakehead. He wants to go crazy. If you look at him from dead on, He's got a very flat head. So he sits along the bank and they're constantly looking up like I'm telling you. So when that frog goes right above his head, he's looking up, looking up, looking up. He's sitting along the bank waiting for a frog or a lizard, a little duckling, literally anything that jumps into the water, a little rat that's trying to cross and he's gonna eat it. The coolest thing about this for a fisherman, we're casting along the bank. These fish, it's not just like a sudden strike. You can watch them wake it almost every single time. You're seeing them, you're seeing them come up and they just throw this water behind them and it's just gets your blood pumping, man. So we just left our snakehead spot and we're coming back to the middle part of the lake because Johnny, we didn't see any cloud knife, so we're gonna go look for the cloud knives now, but 
This area is absolutely beautiful. We just went through a bunch of model docks, gallinals, and I don't know. I, I just think Florida has a lot to offer, not just saltwater wise, but freshwater wise too. And it's just, we live in such a beautiful, privileged area. And when I say privileged, I'm talking about the fact that you can fish 365 days a year. If you want to go fishing in Florida, you can 100% of the time. And we are forever grateful. I know a lot of you guys watch these videos from up north and like the entire, pretty much everywhere up north is going through a blizzard. So thank you guys for watching and uh, come spending your time in not so sunny Florida, but at least you guys can watch this and hopefully look forward to a nice warm spring coming near you. Right now, we are driving up and down the lake. Johnny's got the boat in gear and we're looking for a bait fish known as shad. So out here in all this open water, there's really no way of knowing where these bait fish are unless you got one of these right here. So he's using the GPS and he's trying to mark these little bait fish. And what are you looking for, Johnny? I'm just looking for some marks on the screen. Um, we're using side scan on this Garmin unit and uh, yeah, we just gotta find them and throw the net on them and hopefully catch a whole bunch of them. One of the hardest times to catch shad is when it's raining and unfortunately it's been raining all day so hopefully these shad will start to bulk up together and get real tight that last throw that i just did with the cast net was not very fruitful and we only had maybe two dozen baits in there i feel confident when i at least have 150 in the well so we got about 24 got a long way to go but i tell you what he throws it like a pro donnie so Johnny deal. just got a nice throw. I'd say that's at least five dozen baits, right? At least. So this is what Johnny is cast netting. It's called a threadfin shad. Looks like a little pilchard. Um, and the reason it's called a threadfin shad, if I could pull up this, this little threadfin. So if you guys see, he's got this little thread-like fin right behind his dorsal fin. And that's where they get their name from. Well, yeah, that is the primary I would say it's the primary forage in this lake for most of the species, whether it's peacock bass, largemouth bass, pretty much everything will eat a shad because they're so small and just very abundant. Look at that. Those are some prime time shad right there for what we're gonna be doing today. All right, so we're gonna net some of these beautiful shad. Here you go, Johnny. We're gonna go right in the mouth and right out the top. You only wanna hook them in that top lip if you hook them through the bottom, through the top, it'll drown the fit. It'll drown the bait. Cloud knives are very mysterious. They move around a lot. They're never really in the same location. Sometimes Johnny will catch them here. Sometimes we'll catch them in other areas of the lake. But a telltale sign of where to find them, you'll see them rolling. So their their backs will come out of the water, and you just see this big silver protrusion come out. And this is where he's been seeing them recently. So this is where we're setting up shop. But they're constantly moving all day long. So it's just. It's good to have a couple rods in the water. We'll probably do like three or four. And now we just sit and wait. But as you guys are waiting for this bite, take a quick second to shout out uh, Waterland Co., the sunglass sponsor on the channel. So for the past year, you guys have been hearing me talk about this sunglass company. I absolutely love them. I've been using them for a year now. They come in a ton of different models. They got glass lenses, plastic lenses, all different colors. They even got lady sunglasses and being a fisherman and this is my livelihood you know having a good pair of sunglasses is super important to me because it just makes your time on the water so much more enjoyable you can see more so you guys can actually check them out linked below you can save 15 percent off use my code landshark at waterlinko.com and yeah we're waiting on a clown bite right now oh yeah oh yeah we're bit Oh my gosh. This is definitely going to be a clown. Get him, Johnny. He's going to come up and jump, I think. 100% a clown right here, folks. That was fast, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, the targets. Dude, he's got so many spots. Here we go. He's going to jump. He's going to jump. You don't have a net. We're going to just grab him, right? Yep. Yep. Um, if you want to hold the rod, I'll grab him. He's still very green, so. Oh! No! 
We should go back to the truck and get the net. <laughs> <laughs> and as you guys see, they're very crazy. They jump, they do all these, they almost like they swim backwards. They kind of stick their head up and they wiggle their crazy looking body down and ultimately he shook the hook, but we've been here all three minutes, so we should get another one here soon. So here's the rig, just a little light piece of fluorocarbon, split shot to help cast it away from the boat and to sink them because a lot of times they're down deep. And then a little Wano Mustad beak hook and then just a shack thing. Oh yeah, baby. Oh no, he let go. You didn't let him really come back. Wow. It's the clown knife fish shuffle. Oh, I'm bit. Yep, 100% bit. Holy cow, he's running. Oh, geez. Yeah, baby. Had my drag a little bit loose there. Here we go. Oh my God, he's on the surface. It's a big clown. It's a big clown. Can we double up, Johnny? I would love to double up, Vic. Would you foul hook him? I think so. This is the weirdest fighting clown knife I've ever had. Yeah. Oh no, he's hooked regular. I think he was just wrapped. The hook's right in the corner of his mouth. Grab him, grab him, grab him, grab him. Oh no! <laughs> what a pro. Oh, I thought you had him. Yeah, just squeeze. Hold on, he's going under the boat. Here, let go. Got him. Good job, Vic. Yeah, we got a clown. I Look thought he was foul hooked at first too. He, he was just wrapped. Look at that freaky looking fish. Perfect hook set too. So, so cool. Everything about these fish is just alien like. Keep an eye on the front rod. It's right. out too, so. All right, so you guys have never seen it. This is a clown knife fish, also called a clown featherback. Every single one is unique. They all have a little bit of a different spot variation. You guys see they're on the tail, all those fall size. Sometimes you catch a clown with one spot, two spots. They all have different numbers of spots. They got this funny looking little dorsal fin, very strange little mouth. And if you look inside, he's got these little tiny teeth. It almost looks like on his tongue and then little tiny teeth here. But other than that, they don't have much. I'm pretty sure that they just swallowed their uh, forage double. hole. You got another one? Yep. Get him. Um, but yeah, you guys see when I said that they oh, swim- He when came I, off. When I said they swim weird. So you see his entire bottom of his body is just one giant fin. And uh, I think it helps him in the way that they hunt. These fish are also really nocturnal. So crazy to think I'm holding a fish that is not meant to be here that came from thousands of miles away and is now flourishing here. And John, I mean, it's great for Johnny's business. They're invasive, but at the same time, people come from all over the world to catch these fish. And this is the only spot where I'm standing right now in the United States where you can catch a cloud knife fish. Look at that thing running. Look at it run, look at it run, look at it run. I think he just dropped it. He did. No way. He's kind of scaled. He's got like a little hole in him right there. I'm bit, I'm bit. Feeding him, feeding him, but please don't drop it this time. Take it off the hook again. Oh no, he swam towards the boat. It's a hybrid. Or as they call them in the Northeast, a diaper striper. A baby striper. Pretty plentiful in Lake Ida. Very cool looking little guy. The real version of this fish in the Northeast gets massive. Way, way, way bigger than this. Yep. So we tried a new approach. We tried drifting and immediately we got hooked up. This fish feels... I'm gonna put it's pulling way more drag than the other fish did. This could be my first clown knife fish of the day. We went out a little bit deeper. And I'll tell you what, it is a dark, gloomy day, guys. It's a clown, Johnny. Yeah? It's a clown. Nice. 
They fight so weird. Woohoo! That bird thought he's gonna eat that thing, no way. Jeez. He's a little green, I would say, Vic. Yeah. Nice one. Oh, dude, look at that double spot right there. Yeah. Hold him like a little baby. A little baby? Captain Johnny puts you on him every single time. This that is was... like our sixth video together, and every single time we catch him. That was like an insta bite, too. Mm hmm. We've never had a bad day, Vic. No. We, we really, I mean, fishing is fishing, but uh, I've never had a bad day with Vic. Johnny's I, my boy on and off the water. He knows that. And I've never had a bad meal with Vic either. We are going to give this cloud <laughs> knife fish and snakehead justice. All right. We're going to make an amazing meal with these fish and show you guys that even freaky fish like this can be made into something delicious. I want you guys to think about all the fish you've seen in your life. There is nothing that resembles this fish. They are very unique in a class of their own. One final look at the snakehead before we fillet it up. Nice little like four pound fish using the eight inch Dexter flexible fillet. These guys are very awkward because they roll around like a hot dog. But we're going to trace them from head to tail. So as you guys see, Today's weather, it's just not it, you know? We made the most of it, but started out the day sitting in the car, waiting for the rain to end before we could even get out of here. Came back home, just got off 95, Johnny dropped us off, and it's still raining. It's just non-stop. And I think that's why the fishing was slow too, because Freshwater fish, I think even more than saltwater fish, when we get cold fronts, which is what's happening right now, the temperature drops and temperature in freshwater gets affected way more than the ocean because it's so much shallower. So these fish, it's just, they're not used to it. So they change and especially something like a, uh, a snakehead that's used to warm tropical water, doesn't like it when it gets cold. Man, these guys are just slimy. Really a big rib cage on them too. As you see, this rib cage goes from here all the way down about halfway the length of his body. But look at that. That is not bad looking meat at all. And you guys can actually save 20% off all Dexter knives. Use my code Landshark. All the OG subscribers know, it's the only knife I've used for the last, I don't know, like my almost my entire career on YouTube. It's getting kind of dark now, but you guys will get a better look at this fish when it's in, once it's in the kitchen and we got some more light on it. So you guys take a look at this fish one last time before he's filleted. It is a freaky looking fish, but you can fillet it pretty much like anything else. Now this fish, a lot of YouTubers and some popular YouTubers have tried to make this fish and everybody said it was trash. It's not trash. It's just that you have to know how to prepare this fish. Now I'm not throwing shade at anyone who calls it trash because to the naked eye and the first time you're going to cook it, it's intimidating. This is a fish that you have to prepare and treat differently like nothing else. The only thing I could compare this to is ladyfish. Ladyfish is a, a fish we have here in Florida, a saltwater fish that is very mushy and bony. And when I say bony, you guys have no idea what bony is until you've seen this fish right here. So you fillet just like anything else, right? And go over the rib cage, go over the backbone. Look at all these like intricate muscles and stuff it has too. It's like anything you've ever seen before. The meat is not very white. It's almost got like a, a bluish tint to it. You cannot treat this like a normal fish. And here is why. I can take a spoon and this fish is so mushy that it comes right off. It's got almost no texture and no bite to it. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just this is the way you got to prepare this fish. And you're gonna see as I scrape the meat off of this clown knife fish, 
It's gonna expose a bunch of little feather-like bones. And you gotta find which way the uh, grain of the meat is running. Like in this line right here, it's running this way. And I'm just pressing gently down with my spoon and scraping from tail to head until I get all the meat off. And then I just set it aside right there. Same thing, just scraping from the tail down to the head. I know it looks freaky and I know it might be gross, but the reason you have to do this is not even just because of the recipe that I have in mind, which is to make it into a fish cake. It's because if I was trying to fillet this fish like a normal fish, these fish have so many tiny, tiny bones all throughout their fillet. It's not like a normal fish where it's just attached to the skeleton. They just have all these little bones all throughout their fillet and there's no way to get the meat off properly off of the bone without scraping it off. In Thailand, which this fish is very popular, this is the traditional way they eat this fish. So I'm gonna continue to basically just do this for the next five minutes or however long it takes. And I'll see you guys in the kitchen. And I'm telling you, we're gonna make something so delicious, you're not gonna wanna miss it. So check it out, guys. The clown knife fish does not have a lot of yield at all in terms of what you get off of the fish. Like I said, they were really bony. So this is all of the stuff that I scraped off. And if you look, it is complete mush. So you really have to go into this video, into this recipe with an open mind. Doesn't smell, there's nothing weird about it. It's not oily, it's really delicious. This is like the fourth or fifth time we've had it. And those bones stay on that flesh. Now, since I don't have a lot of meat, I got Johnny and Laura who are joining us for dinner. We also took the snake head home and I'm gonna make fish cakes out of both fish, but kind of combine them. So yeah, and this is what the snake head looks like. Very minimal bloodline. And for a fish that lives in a canal, I mean, you guys saw the water we caught it in, not the best conditions. I know a lot of people ask about like eating fish out of fresh water. In Florida, I think it's fine. Our canals are so interconnected and there's so much rain and they're constantly being flushed out. It's not like you're eating fish out of stagnant water. Uh, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do with this fish is I'm gonna cut it into really long strips first, and then I'm gonna mince it because I want this meat to be real fine for our fish cakes. So I'm just gonna make this into nice long strips. But if you look at it, I mean, it's really a good looking fish. Brooke's dad was sad that he wasn't here for dinner, but it's a little late. It's past his bedtime, Brian. So now what I'm gonna do is cut it into as fine pieces as I possibly can. I'm just gonna go down the length of the fish, just like this. And then once it's done, I'm gonna mince in it a little bit even more. This is how we're gonna do the fish cakes. You got the snakehead, you got the cloud knife fish. Over here I have grated ginger, garlic, orange bell pepper, and some minced white onion. Now, all we're using for dry seasonings is gonna be salt and pepper, a little sesame oil for flavor. We're gonna do an egg as a binder, kinda help everything to stick together. And then some breadcrumbs is also gonna help it to stick and also give it a little flavor and texture so it's not just fish, fish, fish. And then I'm just gonna mix it with my hands. Just making it into the shape of a hamburger and I got five people we're cooking for so I'm just gonna try to make right around five even sized pieces of our fish cake. Pretty easy to work with. I think that egg really helps bind everything and that bread too. And if you had really big pieces of fish, it wouldn't really stick together. So cutting them nice and fine and mincing them really helps. But you got all that flavor in there. Picture the ginger, garlic, onion, peppers, um, just a lot of good stuff. And I know every single trash fish or every single time I get one of these weird fish videos, someone's gonna comment and say, you can't even taste the fish. How would you even know if it's bad? Let me tell you something. If you ever have anything in nature that's bad or rotten, 
whether it's yogurt or a bad piece of steak or fish or chicken. Nature lets you know when something's bad. If this fish was really that bad, it would not be edible. It would smell or it would be rancid. Just because you're adding flavor to it and you know how to cook doesn't make it a trash fish by trying to mask everything. I'm not masking, I'm enhancing. We're gonna shallow pan fry the snakehead patty, or we're gonna shallow pan fry our fish cakes. So I'm just gonna take them right into the hot oil right here. Set them in there nicely. And it's super easy to make. You could do this with literally any fish. You're basically just making a fish hamburger, you know? Flavor it with whatever you want. But fish is a lot more bland than beef, so that's why I put in the peppers and onions and ginger and garlic in there. And I gotta pay respect to where this fish came from. We gotta incorporate those Southeast, Southeast Asian flavors, you know? To go with our fish cakes, we got some brioche buns. And I wanted, instead of like lettuce, tomato, onion, you know, we're gonna do a little Asian style coleslaw. So we got some mango, cilantro, red pepper, purple onion, and we're gonna go on with some lime juice for that acidity. I almost forgot, it's a coleslaw and we're missing the main ingredient. Oh gosh, the bag was open. <laughs> we're missing the cabbage. So we're also gonna add some shredded cabbage in here, some salt. Chef Johnny intervened here and flipped our fish without them being on video, but this is what they're looking like. They're Delicious looking nice. golden brown fish cakes. You cool. did a great job, Johnny. I didn't want, you know, I didn't want them to burn, so I have to eat these too. I've been burning things lately too. <laughs> I burned the pompano last time. What else did I burn recently? Thank you, Chef Johnny. You're welcome. I'm gonna start a cooking channel on YouTube, so uh, Victor's gonna have to link below in the description for you. <laughs> The self-promo around here, huh? So to go with our fish cake sandwiches, I just got some Duke's mayo right here. This stuff is so, so delicious. It's chili garlic crunch. It looks spicy as heck, but it's not. It's just got so much flavor. And then what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna incorporate it into this mayo right here. It's crunchy, it's garlicky, but it's not like a bitter garlic. And the oil flavor in here is just amazing. Bam. Now we got a fancy Asian aioli. That's what they would do to you at a restaurant and charge you $35 for a fish sandwich. Beautiful Publix and brioche bun. Some of our chili garlic mayo. Gorgeous fish cake. I mean, look at that. That looks good. The flavor and smell that's coming off of there. Those onions got caramelized. And then now watch. We take some of our mango coleslaw, and it's gonna pair so well with the flavors of that fish. And as you guys can see, I've been in a real sandwich mood lately. I think for something that came out of a canal in a lake today, that looks pretty dang good. Not throw any shame at lake fishermen or anything, but you know, as a saltwater fisherman, and I think a lot of saltwater guys, they kind of put their nose up to freshwater fish a lot, but they shouldn't, because you can make delicious and amazing things just like this from freshwater fish. So let's eat. Going in for that bite. This looks really good. It's really good. I've eaten clown knife a few times with Victor before and snakehead just on its own. And um, this is probably one of the best freshwater dishes that I've ever had here. It's got like a mango, what is this, a mango coleslaw? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Mango it. coleslaw on it. And I love mango, it's probably one of my favorite fruits. And um, knocked it out of the park, really good, really flavorful. And um, the fish is cooked perfectly because I cooked it. And um, <laughs> it's really good. It's got a nice little crisp on it. Good job, Victor. Hey, you cooked it perfectly. Mm -hmm. I just would have burnt it. I would order this at a restaurant any day of the week. There's not many ways to describe it. I mean, obviously it's in a sandwich, but it just tastes like good fish. It tastes like fresh fish. That's all it tastes like. Mm -hmm. Chili, that chili mayo, sweetness from the mango, the acidity from the lime. Um, you can taste the ginger and garlic when you get deep into that bite with the fish. I just think it pairs really well together. I would 100% do this again, serve it to anyone. I would love 
serve this to people because I think it would be a winner. I think people would really like this. I think people that don't like fish or that normally wouldn't order fish would eat this and be like, wow, this is right up right up their alley. I think that's exactly what they would say. I feel like we don't have fish sandwiches very often, but literally you made a fish sandwich last time. Yeah. And another one, two completely different fish sandwiches, both absolutely delicious. It's a very fun texture to eat in a sandwich as like a fish because it's got that crispy outside but then it's also very soft. It's a very fun way to eat fish. It's spongy. Or as my <laughs> man Johnny Stabile would say the first time he ever had clown knife fish, he said it was bouncy. <laughs> like a ball. <laughs> I did say that. This is definitely my favorite way we've had the clown knife fish with you because we were talking about it on the way here. We had the crab, or crab cakes. Fish cakes once and meatballs one time, but this is definitely my favorite. I like the ginger a lot. And I feel like crab cakes this way would be really good. Like with mm -hmm. these flavors. Mm -hmm. Can't believe you hold this. You guys, this thing is like a brick. My man's got Popeye forearms. Oh, he commits when he eats a sandwich. It's gonna be interesting because Dennis has never had clown knife fish, but all of us have had it before. Yeah, no, I absolutely hate it. So, um, definitely don't recommend. <laughs> As you take another bite. The mango. It's so good with the mango. The mango just comes through really nice. Yeah. And then you got the crispiness. It's great. I've never had fish done like this. Except for Amoco Jack or Amber Jack. It'd also be kind of interesting to have like snakehead like regular fillet because I haven't had that yet. Highly recommend them. It's really good. Awesome. Really good. This yeah. is definitely the best way we've had it. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm almost done with mine. All I gotta say is bon appetit to you guys. If you want to book a charter and make your very own cloud knife fish slash snakehead sandwich, you can do so by booking a trip with my boy Johnny, yep. South Florida Fishing Charters. Today was a little bit slow, but, but it's fishing. You know, the very first time we filmed together, I caught my biggest ever cloud knife fish and one of the biggest that I've ever seen on that lake. It was 12, it was 11 or 12 pounds, I believe. Absolutely massive fish. We've caught peacocks together. He's put me on tarpon in Miami. He's just a good, very knowledgeable guy down here. So if you guys are into the inshore stuff, please be sure to check him out. I'll have all this stuff linked below. And that's it, dude. Just another good day on the water. Good seeing you guys. It's been a while. <laughs> Bye.